everybody. I'm Brian Julius. I'm the Chief Content Officer for Enterprise DNA. And what I want to do today is follow up on my video from last week. And in the video last week, I introduced something I like to call the magic data set call. And that's what lets you, within Power Query, step out of Power Query into R or Python, run a lot of advanced analyses, and then seamlessly jump back into Power Query and continue processing your data. And so in that video from last week, what I did is showed how you could create a new function um, in order to solve a problem related to prime numbers. And what I want to do today is go a little bit more advanced than that in terms of showing how you can do inferential statistics very, very quickly and easily um, using the same really flexible data set call. So what, I, what I'm using for the example in this case is the um, Enterprise DNA Data Challenge number 23 um, entry that Gustav Dudek and I uh, put together last month um, for that challenge. And it focused on um, healthcare data for a substance abuse treatment program. And there were, there were pre and post tests that were done for each patient um, to measure the effect of the different treatment program that they they underwent. So in some cases it was what was called usual treatment and in other cases it was this newer experimental treatment. And so what we've got here is we've got just the box plots of the the overall data pre and post scores. And what you can see just from looking at it is they don't look very different. Um, that the post score looks like it has a slightly higher median um, maybe a little bit more variance in the um, the extremes, but generally speaking, they look they look similar. But one of the things that's important to recognize is that, particularly for non-normal data, looks can be deceiving, and so you can't necessarily say these two are equal. Um, that there are many cases where you can look at data from a visualization and not be able to tell whether the differences that you're showing are significant or not from a statistical standpoint. And when we talk about that, what we're really asking is, how sure are we that differences we're seeing are real as opposed to just artifacts of the sample that we're analyzing? And so this is something we really can't do just in, in Power BI alone. Um, Power BI is really not set up to do this sort of statistical analysis, and particularly for more complex tests on data that doesn't fit the simple inferential statistics we might want to use. And so in this case, I did some um, preliminary analysis. And it, the data that we're analyzing looked to be non-normal, which means that typically what we would do to test these, this hypothesis of the difference between the pre and post scores is something called a paired t-test. And that requires normality in the differences between the scores. And in this case, it looks like we don't have that, but we're going to test that. And then if in fact it's true that we can reject the hypothesis that the the difference in the data is 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 normal, then there's another test that we're going to want to run. And I want to show you how to run that test. And the, the specifics of this are not really important. And for those of you who are interested in this, one of the things I'm really excited about is we've been working to put together a series of courses that teaches data analysts the statistical underpinnings of exactly this type of analysis. And we, we are getting ready to commence putting those courses together, and I hope to have those um, done at the end of the year, beginning of, beginning of 2023. And um, we've got a great instructor, um, top-notch statistician, and we'll be we'll be talking about that a lot more. But for now, I just want to show you the the mechanics of how this is done, and it'll, it'll really kind of highlight the the ability you'll have to run this this type of analysis or other types of complex analysis yourself using this data set command. So let's jump into into Power Query, and we'll take a look. So here is the here's the main data that we've got. And it's just 
it's got a date and a patient ID, which program they were in, and then a whole bunch of demographic data that we ended up testing and analyzing. Um, but what we're going to be looking at here is really the DLA-1, the Daily Living Activities Test, number one, which is the pretest before their treatment, and then the DLA-2, which is after treatment, and DLA-Delta, which is the difference between the two. Um, so basically, what we want to do is, let's jump down into this into this test. So this is this is just basically a copy of the of the data file, the main data file. And the reason we, we don't operate on the, the main data file itself is the tests we're going to run are actually going to transform this table. And so we want to keep the data intact in a separate table. So what we want to do here is we start with the source. And as I showed in the previous video, um, what we could do is we could do all sorts of transformations and then call the R script if we had an unpivot to do or if we had some other processing or cleaning of the data that we wanted. But this data was actually very clean coming in. And so all we want to do at this point is jump into Power BI and, um, and go to the R script step. And rather than watch me type this in, let me just paste this and we can talk about what this means. So as I talked about before, um, these library commands just call packages. And these are these are four packages that were needed. These are like add-ins in, in the R that are needed to run specific types of analyses. And then what we do is we call data set. And this is this is again where the magic happens, which is this this takes everything that happens up to this R script, which in this case is just the data itself. There's no transformations. Um, it feeds it in this ridge data table. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to call a couple of a couple of technical tests here um, within R. The first one is one called Shapiro Wilk, and that is to test the normality of the of the data. Um, and all we do here is we call the test, we call the column that we want to test, and then we, we send the results out to this tidy function, which just puts the results in a nice table, table form. And the next one that we have is the Anderson-Darling test. It's another normality test. Um, we're just being kind of super complete here in running both, and then we're, we're sending that out to tidy. And then what we're running is with the assumption that this is going to come back non-normal. We're just running what's called the non-parametric test here, which is is just a test that compares the the before and after, um, called the the Wilcoxon sign rank test. And this is a test that, unlike the t-test, doesn't assume anything about the underlying distribution. Um, so it's um, it's more flexible. It's it's not quite as powerful in terms of distinguishing differences as a parametric test or one that is that assume normality. But in this case, that assumption doesn't hold. So um, we run the the non-parametric version, and this is just the calling the Wilcoxon test with our DLA DLA one DLA two. Um, prepared data showing that it's a before and after for the same individual. And then um, the alternative hypothesis here being that um, we're, we're making the assumption that the treatment is only going to improve things. It may not improve it much or even at all, but it's not going to make it worse. And then we're sending that out to tidy. And then we're taking and we're just stacking really appending all three results into this one table called all. So that's a lot of statistical analysis and really just four lines of code. So let's just hit hit OK. And you see that that runs quick. And then we've got all these different tables, but the only one we really want is all because that's the one that stacks up all the results that we that we need. So we just select all table. And then we just want to expand that. And we, we want all the columns, but we don't want this prefix. Hit OK. 
it's going to run a little bit. And there we go. So basically what we've got is we've got the, the statistic, the p-value, and these are the, the three tests that we ran. And so what we can do is we can take and now if we close this out and go into Power Query, we can just um, use this in DAX to run logical tests. We can put these into visuals. We can put them into smart narratives. Let me show you kind of what's possible with this data set call, which is if we if we go here into statistics and we go to the R script. So this is basically about 150 lines of statistical code that um, we used as the basis for our our entire analysis. And this was all run in one step off one data set call and basically produces a whole series of tables. You'll see in a minute as this kind of cranks through um, a whole series of tables that we can then use to feed our results in the entire analysis. And what we've done here is basically take the results of, of that data set run and expand them out, do some merging, remove some columns that we don't need, um, and kind of clean that, clean that table up and then back out to Power Query. So this is just kind of finally grinding through. And there you can see, so we've got 33 different tables of results that come out of that, out of that one data set call. So that's probably a good place to round off, but hopefully it gives you just a sense of how powerful that data set call is and the flexibility of what you can do with that. So it's not just statistical analysis you can run, but you can do sentiment analysis, you can do web scraping, you can do machine learning, you can do basically anything that either Python or R are capable of, and then feed the results of that back into Power Query, and then take that out of Power Query into Power BI and visualize it, analyze it further. And that just that just creates just an analytical powerhouse. And so I hope that's, that's kind of sparked some excitement for you, um, some possible chance to experiment. And um, as I say, we've got a lot more a lot more coming on this for those of you who are interested. Um, and I look forward to exploring that with you. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.